Hi, welcome to our talk about women in Romanian cinema. Uh, we're going to have a talk with uh, Ada Solomon, Corina Borlacu, and Irina Trocan. Hi. Um, Hi. Congratulations. Good. <laughs> That's actually a very good line to start any, any conversation with you. Wow, what a beautiful, what a beautiful setup, beautiful colors, Irina. You are like in a, in a movie. <laughs> I try. Um, yesterday, some of my students told me that it actually resembles the living room and the rabbit sitcom from uh, Inland Empire. <laughs> you know, the one that was totally absurd as no? yes. I don't know. I tried. Maybe I overdid it. No, no. It's very nice. I like it. It's been my classroom for a year, so mm -hmm. we're all kind of growing tired of it, actually. Okay, so thank you so much uh, for joining us today. And um, I, I hope we can create this safe space for just a natural discussion on several topics regarding gender uh, equality. And I would like to jump right in. And the first person I would like to talk to is Ada, as the president of the board of EWA. I would uh, ask you, what is the mission and what is uh, this idea of this network? So the network, the organization itself, it's, it's based uh, not so much in uh, avo advocacy for, uh, for the um, unpleasant situation of the women, but it's more based on success and promoting the success of women in the, in the whole sector, cultural sector. Um, and uh, sharing the expertise on success towards the newcomers. So that's, that's how the mentoring program, for instance, it's going on, the mentoring program being a kind of pairing between uh, younger producers and um, established producers and going on uh, together on, uh, on this journey. Um, the um, uh, script writing residency are also uh, based on um, emerging talents, uh, the awards where we are um, awarding uh, excellency of women in different uh, uh, platforms, in different um, um, competitions, mm -hmm. uh, like in Trieste or in Doc Leipzig or uh, in other, uh, in other uh, places. So the idea is to, uh, uh, to unite forces and to share experiences as to, uh, to strengthen the, um, uh, the women power uh, by, by positive uh, examples. Mm -hmm. So it's not building all on uh, on vulnerability and complaints, but more on um, the power that uh, that is with us and examples of good practice. Um, yeah. But the, the other very important thing is that um, few people know that Eva is an organization that um, started by collecting data many years yeah. ago. Uh, it was one of the first organizations that started to uh, put on paper the discrepancies yeah, regarding actually... the women presence in, in different sectors. Yeah. Um, and, and this is a very important issue and I think we should continue on that because the bias, it's one thing and what it seems that it happens uh, and um, and the reality it's completely other when you when you search a little bit in depth, like mm -hmm. for instance, um, um, as long as uh, we do have um, quota, I'm not a person that it's uh, that it's advocating for for quotas. I don't think uh, it's um, neither fair uh, nor. Um, um, legitimate in a in a way because as a woman I feel offended if I'm considered uh, considered like uh, inferior. Okay. So I yeah. need a bonus uh, in order to uh, to to jump at the same level. So I prefer not to have these quotas, but. Um, I think that when we speak about the presence of the of the women, we uh, we we should think not only at the 
uh, gender of the director or scriptwriter or producer, but we should look in the same way in the content in the rest of the of the head of departments and first and foremost i think it's necessary to to establish this kind of balance when we are talking about the people that are judging the applications mm -hmm. or uh, the the programming or the uh, the juries uh, of all kind because we need a com complete perspective also yeah. when these projects are analyzed, because from the audience point, point of view, there we do have a balance or even a more uh, uh, feminine <laughs> audience uh, uh, because the population is more feminine. So mm -hmm. there, uh, there we go uh, to, to something like that. So when we decide what we are going to present and what is to be uh, spotlighted, I think we also need this feminine perspective uh, in terms of judging. Yeah, but uh, um, regarding, for example, some of the uh, analysis that has been made and the reports that have been made and shared by EWA, uh, how can we evaluate in general the, the path we've been through through the last let's say eight years, because I remember reading a report from 2013. So how can we evaluate these past few years in terms of the differences in the industry itself, in terms of representation of women in the film industry? I think it's, a, it's an amazing pass what, what happened. But this, this uh, uh, I think we are much better, definitely much better in all respects. Uh, even if you if we only speak about um, um, how we look into it and how we spot the presence of the women um, but in the same time i think that it's also a matter of generations and the number of students uh, in the last 10 15 years in comparison with what was happening like 30 years ago has grown the voices, I mean, I, I think that everything that happened, it's not only that they are more present, but uh, everything that it's happening, it gives more confidence. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the new generation and even the, even the, the let's say uh, established or mature uh, generations um, are feeling that they are not inferior, that they are equal and and th there is a kind of um, immaterial uh, uh, strength that it's in the air. Mm -hmm. And this, this is very, very, very good. And uh, it, it means a lot. Yeah. And uh, Irina, I would like to take this opportunity to also talk about film schools. So we've been talking about education. And I think that's a really important point, not only in terms of the outcome, so we do see a generally more or less equal representation of female and male students in universities, but then the outcome usually goes towards women not being able to enter the workforce. But before going there, I was wondering, uh, in general, uh, from your perspective, uh, what is being taught in film school? So what version of history are we learning? And what sort of gaze are we also giving the opportunity for the students to analyze and get acquainted with? Um, so to kind of answer your questions in reverse order, I think that definitely there's a male bias in you know, canonical uh, film history. I think we're working to solve that. Um, and from that point of view, I do think that the past you know, 10 years or maybe even 30 years have been a constant progress in that respect. But um, I think, you know, it's a subtle difference, but it's an important one in the sense that if film critics and film historians are overwhelmingly male, then even the idea of quality in cinema of tend to have a male bias, basically. Um, even, you know, in Romanian cinema, the first award winners have mostly been with male characters and kind of representing this point of view that to be established in life, you have to, you know, have a family and uh, be the breadwinner and so on, which, you know, that's certainly a way of life that many people adhere to. I'm not saying stop making those films. It's just, you know, uh, from a critical vantage point, 
there has to be a plea for more diversity in what gets awarded. Um, and usually female made films, female directed uh, films are, I, I don't mean to generalize, but there are often more whimsical films like um, Anna Lungu's A Prince and a Half, uh, to give a concrete example, where the there's this trio of characters, two male, one female, none of them is striving for that seriousness that has been depicted in several Romanian um, established filmmakers output mm -hmm. and so on. And going back even, you know, in the way you teach the 50s and 60s and 70s in cinema, there's definitely um, an aspiration of aesthetics that is, you know, technically universal, but actually male. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not saying that nobody should be watching Tarkovsky anymore because uh, representations of women in his films are often sexist. I'm just saying let's separate, you know, the camera movements and the overall structure of the film from this spirituality that is, uh, you know, orthodox and thus somewhat biased in representing um, gender relations. Mm -hmm. Um, and but that's why I think it's also important to give context, right? So certain sure. terms, like we have this discussion now in Portugal in terms of literature, that certain pieces of work are a bit racist. Uh, we're not disqualifying its quality. We just are craving for a bit of a context and kind of, okay, we should talk about this. This, is, this was an issue, but mm -hmm. it was something that was done at the time. So we give context, right? No, sure. And there's definitely... Um you know, what is internationally called male fragility at stake in many of these discussions in the sense that, you know, if you point out that Radu Montana sometimes have, has characters that are not, you know, um, the female characters that are other, let's put it mildly. It's not that they're sinful, it's not that they're, you know, inferior, it's just that they're seen from without. Um, and if you point that out, people will, you know, jump at you that you're adhering to cancel culture and what was okay five days ago is now suddenly inadmissible and how are you going? You're basically, you know, filtering out a uh, film history to pick what you like. And I, I'm not proposing to do that. I don't think anyone is. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I'm just saying that these things need, need to be spelled out, especially in university context, especially when talking to female students who are still, you know, searching for an identity. And I don't want anyone to be pigeonholed based on anatomy. I mean, I, I think that this is something that people have been, feminists have been pleading for 60 years not to do. It, it, it's high time. It's not something that uh, we only discovered yesterday. And in terms of gender balance in university, actually, most of my classes are in this department that is called called uh, audiovisual communication or screenwriting and film studies. And for decades, it's been overwhelmingly female. And there are a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, the highest uh, graded students are always female. The ones who go in first, you know, are always human. I'm not saying they're the best or like <laughs> male students are not, maybe they're, they just don't conform to um, university standards as, you know, or yeah, loyally. Um, but yeah, because there, at the same there... time, sorry, I was just thinking that, for example, when we think about the female gaze, um, sometimes people expect that just because it's a female director, there is a female gaze. And so I was also wondering in this terms of academic context, because the way we also teach things, the, the way women are represented, uh, the, the forms of representation we have also, uh, kind of mold our way of creating some sort. So sometimes there is a male gaze. And I don't know if it's uh, due to the this prevalent uh, sort of representation and the things we are taught in school, or if it's just, uh, yeah, it, it seems like it's kind of like this whole context at the same time. So because we there are all, a lot oh, of sure. things about yeah female driven projects so having like a uh, female director film script script writer and everything um to try and achieve that uh, female gaze um i'm not sure that you know female made films necessarily step away from the male gaze 
I can yeah. think of quite a few examples. I'm not even sure that, you know, for instance, having a queer female director would make it less likely for her style to adhere to uh, traditional cinema norms that are usually driven by this assumption yeah. that the woman is being looked at and the male is um, the, yeah, the bearer of the gaze. Um, but yeah, sure. I mean, a lot of reflexes um, from our daily mental habits are brought into film, mm -hmm. you know, intentionally or not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think the discussion is actually a bit deeper or wider in the sense that, okay, we all talk about cinema because that's our area of expertise, but uh, recently, one of my students told me that Insta that she finds Instagram more toxic than Facebook, which was a surprise to me because I thought that you know most of the uh, poisonous conversations are stimulated by the Facebook algorithm and go on there. And she said and that yeah, okay, what? But uh, again, this is a conversation with a twenty-year-old, and she said that um, Instagram kind of gives you the impression that everyone is living the perfect life and having the perfect bodies and you know flawless skin and everything that a filter can <laughs> overlap uh on your actual real uh corporeal existence so yeah i mean it the male gaze is present in cinema but basically everywhere else yeah um audio visual also and in terms of uh going back to the gender balance i do th think that there are these important years immediately after graduation where, you know, you make it or you don't. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, in theory, any female can uh, wait it out and, you know, hang on for a couple of more years for more training and a better uh, professional opportunity and so on. But usually if these things don't happen fast, um, they don't happen at all. Like they go and, you know, seek out a job in a call center or advertising or something else. And in terms of accomplishing their dreams, talent is definitely an important part. Endurance and perseverance is definitely an important part, but that's not the whole story. And, and you know, time and again, I've had the impression that uh, male critics kind of find an easier way to network. Also because so mm -hmm. much of it is informal. I mean, I don't want anyone to imagine that if you're a film critic, you have a salary. <laughs> and like an indeterminate work contract because it doesn't um, happen like that. And that I said, I was giggling because she knows. <laughs> um, so it, it's, you know, just a matter of people seeking you out constantly or your work bringing attention to it constantly uh, for you to feel encouraged to persevere, to, you know, write scripts or uh, have a, I don't think anyone has a film column anymore, but write reviews um, constantly. and it, kind of tends to happen that the most prominent um, young film critics or like uh, film critics in their 40s are male, are the ones who yeah. get more attention. Actually, the EWA published a report exactly on film criticism. And the general idea is that at, in Europe, the average is like 34% of women are film critics. And most of the times, like the proportionate of number mm -hmm. of reviews is is higher for men than actually for women. So it's more possible for a woman to write one article, one review, and then for men to write between like two and 10. So this, the discrepancies are inevitably sure. there. Uh, but I would like to talk about now a little bit about festivals. And for that, I would like to address uh, Corina. I, I was wondering uh, how you tackle this kind of uh, issues in terms of uh, female representation in your own structure of your own festival. Hi, uh, and thank you for inviting me, Teresa. Um, for us, uh, it has to be said from, from the beginning that we're running in the Netherlands a community festival. So our film festival started in 2015 and doesn't did not develop and did not have the intention of developing into a bigger festival with an industry side. That being said, and you know, establishing that we we have a different framework in that respect. For us, as a um, organization that started, uh, um, always happened like that, and it had an, an impact on the programming that that we uh, we did throughout the years. Um, for us, it it happened. 
um, again, naturally to look for films made by women, which um, wasn't necessarily always easy because we live in the Netherlands, we don't necessarily have the same contact with what's happening in Romania, but if we, if we would always, uh, always and often go and ask uh, women filmmakers if they could suggest films made by other women and um, not just directors, but also uh, strong uh, female stories or strong female leads. Um, and so it has been on our, on our agenda very high on, on you know, um, doing our programming in that way. Actually, in, in our second edition, uh, we invited a Romanian actress to curate a program um, with uh, films made by, by women. So we're doing our, you know, we're doing our little best <laughs> to um, find a space for, for these films and for, for, for Romanian women filmmakers. Yeah, and uh, now I would like, yet again, this is an open floor, so you can always jump in and just add something. And <laughs> I'm, uh, but I'm kind of curious about the Romanian uh, side of things. So I was wondering in terms of, I, I tried to browse uh, the National Film Center's website in Romanian, uh, so I could try and get some information and translate it. And one of the things that I noticed, uh, and I think that's not that uncommon, is that yet again, there's no data in terms of, for example, gender gap, uh, in terms of wages. There, there are no specific criteria in terms of, for example, the representation of women in the selectors for the juries for funding. So I was kind of wondering, what is the state uh, in terms of funding for female directors uh, currently in Romania? Uh, the story with the Romanian uh, National Center for cinematography is uh, that you don't find data and relevant things about the whole situation of the of the sector it's not uh, really that on a small topic like like the women representation that's the least of the problem <laughs> that we have with a with the way um, the the Romanian film center it's it's approaching um, its mission so we don't have a strategy. If you look over there, you won't see which are the objectives for uh, the recovery of the sector mm -hmm. or the objectives in five years for keeping the Romanian cinema on the first page as it is, as yeah. it continuing to do. So basically, um, unfortunately, uh, the Romanian filmmakers made their way around on the word by helped by they were supported at a very basic level financially but the, there is no one in the romanian film center for instance that is promoting the the new romanian films towards festivals and having uh, chats it's speaking about festivals uh, Transylvania Film Festival or Le Film de Cana Bucharest uh, Festival are doing much more for the promotion of the Romanian films than the, the Romanian Film Center is doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, then to, to go in depth and to look at the representation of women and what's the, I mean, it's me that I'm noticing that in the last uh, a session of support, um, the, uh, all the, the winners in the debut section were women directors. And yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's an achievement. And it's, it's, it's speaking about where we are and it's speaking about the women talent, but no one is putting this into context and no one is it's valuing it all from a, um, let's say, a institutional perspective. Mm -hmm. unfortunately. Uh, yeah. And in the commissions, uh, it's, it, I think it's more, more males uh, because the, the names, so to say, or the um, accredited by, uh, without in-depth knowledge um, are the ones that are uh, masculine voices. 
um, and we are fighting with this, uh, of course, by uh, when the organizations are proposing members for the commissions. Uh, and I remember that I had this discussion for the last session, I think, uh, when I was uh, advocating for uh, for a uh, young, uh, very connected and and very interesting uh, uh, film critic towards the the head of the film center, and she was telling me, "But I have no idea who this girl is. And that's uh, that's not uh, her fault, mm -hmm. nor our fault." This is your fault that you have no clue uh, of uh, of who this uh, this lady is. I mean, maybe she's young, but she has this and this and this and this as achievements, and um, she she has much more credits in terms of uh, international perspective and contemporary perspective of, of what's going on uh, in the film world than any of the of the guys of. Uh, uh, let's say by now senior uh, generation that you are talking about mm -hmm. that are not only um, um, anchored in a in a perspective that stays somewhere in, in between the 80s and the 90s uh, but they are not at all connected with what's going on now around the world. They are not traveling as much. They are not uh, familiar with the possibilities of the online viewing and all the specialized uh, platforms where you have not only films, but you have debates, but you have all kinds of um, uh, analyzes, discussions, uh, and so on and so forth. So they are completely disconnected from there. So they are not living today mm -hmm. so they cannot judge in perspective what is proposed yeah. so that's a, that's a that's a big problem and but then again i'm not uh, if i'm looking at two um, um directors that i'm working with and i'm, I'm very uh, pleased to work with uh, again, we are not talking here about uh, about who's if a woman is better than a man or a man is better than a woman, because we have films like the the first film of Ivana Mladenovic, where you have two male characters. It's a it's a I'm talking about Soldier's story from Ferentar, so it's her debut film, um, but it's a it's a gay story with two male characters. While if you look at the um, uh, last film of Radu Jude and um, um, uh, Bad Luck Banging uh, or Looney Porn, as well as I do, I do not care if we go down in history as barbarians, he is a male, but his main characters are uh, uh, women, mm -hmm. strong women. Yeah. And I would say, especially uh, for, the, for the last film, for a bad luck, bad luck banging, um, that from my perspective, it's one of the most uh, feminist film um, I know in the re recent years. Definitely, I agree. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So it's, it's very complex and it cannot be judged out of context, mm -hmm. but indeed what it's done of... Uh, uh, at, uh, at an institutional level, it's zero because they don't care, but they don't care about anything, not about this issue. Um, I'd, I'd just like to chip into what um, Ada said earlier, because I think it's a slippery argument that, and a very common one, that if I hadn't heard of X, then X is not important. And a lot of, it mm -hmm. basically validates, you know, network thinking and the idea that if somebody is talented, it'll the rumor will get to you, which I think, you know, sometimes happens, but definitely not always. Um, I was sent by the publishing house a peer review for Romania Cinema Inside Out, which is basically this essay collection on Romanian cinema, old and new. And one of them, I don't think that it was written from a revisionist uh, perspective, all in all, but we tried to, you know, not repeat ourselves. So like, there's this canon of usually male Romanian filmmakers, Champion Tulia, Michel and Luke, uh, uh, Alexandre Tatos, and so on. 
And we said, okay, but what about women filmmakers? If nothing else, it's worth, you know, just going through their whole filmography to see uh, what is worthy or like what is characteristic for their films in a way that maybe hasn't been uh, weighed in earlier. And, you know, incidentally, a queer male colleague, not a woman, uh, wrote this essay on a female filmmaking in the socialist era. Mm -hmm. And the peer reviewer who, was anonymous. Um, it's a small world, so I suspect who the person is, and I suspect she is female. So again, it's more complicated. Um, but came with came up with an argument like, okay, uh, this essay is unconvincing because if these uh, women have done films that are so notable, why do the other authors not mention them at all? And I think you know the whole argument of that essay was. We're advocating for these careers to be revisited and, you know, take a look at someone who has been marginalized as a, a children's film um, author, author like Elizabeth Apostan for, you know, she's not doing something else than children's films, but it's at least worth looking into, you know, the aesthetic qualities, the plasticity, the um, coordination between colors that are sometimes morally coded and some sometimes not, let's take another look. And the peer reviewer was just dismissive of the whole thing that, you know, you're being a mock progressive like the rest of the world. Let's not take any time and any space in the book publishing something like that. And again, I'm not saying that was the final argument in the debate. I'm just saying that I feel it's reductive to say that uh, if I haven't, haven't heard of these wonderful filmmakers and the other uh, authors in the book have not acknowledged already uh, what these women filmmakers are trying to do, then, you know, let's just skip it all together. No, but that's the thing, like, uh, that's why we talked in the beginning about film history, because it has been, as uh, most history has been, has been with this male perspective and white male perspective on things. And so it's kind of like also our job to kind of go and dig and find the gems that at the time probably weren't spoken about or not as spoken about. It's kind of also our job to go and find it and try to highlight it as the the piece of art that it is, right? I don't know, I'm just, uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm kind of also thinking- I can trying... add to that. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but it's one of, uh, for us as a festival, it's one of our struggles. We don't program, um, uh, we're not one of those festivals that only go for the most recent cinema. So we don't take films necessarily that uh, have been uh, this year in big festivals and then they can go to the secondary, say, uh, festival circuit, like where we would be. Um, but we also want to put film in context and we're looking for films that um, are from, you know, uh, from before uh, 1989 and, and it's very difficult to find that with resources that, that are officially online. Like Ada was saying, I mean, it's impossible to find anything on the, on the website of the National Center for Cinema. It's, it's so retrograde, it's so like you meant of films and you have to find your way through that document to see how many women were there and um it's, it's and not this is easy. when they have the the copies of the actual films because i remember i was diving into for example lithuanian poetic documentaries and georgian films directed by women and it's not that easy sometimes to find those films available and with good quality and even subtitles so sometimes it's even hard to get acquainted with the films they exist but yeah. to get there yeah it's really hard sometimes but it, at first it's very gar uh, hard to get to know that they were there, that they happened, that they existed and who are these filmmakers and those titles. And if they're not on the, you know, the, the official channel, the governmental channel, which you would expect to be by now. And uh, like Irina is mentioning, they're also not often mentioned in, in, in literature. So you can get your own other channels. It's a, it's not easy, yeah, to put this content forward. 
Yeah, and considering now the the new kind of topics and themes that might be dominating a little bit of uh, Romanian contemporary cinema, uh, and considering, for example, your festival, the kind of programming, can you identify any sort of themes and topics that have been brought up with this sort of at least bigger attention to diversity? What kind of themes and topics can we talk about in, in regards to the most recent uh, Romanian productions? Made by women filmmakers. Um, Why I, not? Maybe oh, even- General. Yes, yes. Um, well, I, I think that when it comes to, um, to, to women filmmakers, uh, the films that we've we've seen and that have been in in the festival um, are either in the direction of a, of a, you know a, sort of a biography or or a story about a um, a woman personality, but also we see often films that are very personal, very family oriented stories about mothers and relationships within the family. Um, that that I find I see very often, uh, and particularly in in short films. Um, I have to add here that because we are, um, you know, we're not um, a festival that always manages to bring the titles that are very um, present in that year. Titles that have been in festival in big festivals that have bigger words. They um, we don't often manage to get them uh, in our lineups. Well, we watch these films. Uh, um, so th this this would be something that I've seen happening a lot. Uh, our edition was, though I have to say, in 2019, we didn't uh, have a festival in 2020 due to obvious reasons. Um, yeah. And we also didn't feel like this content should be brought in the online exclusively. We felt like we cannot put films into the online, so we we're going to wait until we can do a physical edition. Mm -hmm. Irina, would you like to jump in because uh, part of the the book that I got access to <laughs> uh, was talking also a little bit about the sort of representation of women in terms of characters, how they were kind of objectified, vilified some sorts. Uh, could you uh, kind of just talk a little bit about the new sort of representation that we might be seeing now in uh, Romanian cinema? Oh, uh, that's a tough one, actually. Well, I think we all know by now, uh, you know, the way that traditional families have been represented and the way that, you know, uh, women have been judged based on their qualities as wives, as uh, caretakers, as mothers, nurturing uh, secondary characters and so on. And I think that never quite been the case. I mean, I think in the art house film, there was also, there was always a space where there was more diversity of uh, moral values, I guess, to put it as generally as possible. Mm -hmm. But um, I think things are changing, not necessarily because of cinema, I mean, because of films, but not because of cinema. And I think that one of the, you know, understated factors um, is online distribution or streaming distribution in the sense that to make a TV show for Netflix, you have to have a niche audience all over the world. Uh, whereas to have a full house in any cinema, anywhere you need to be popular with any local audience. Um, and especially, I think it's visible with minority cinemas, but could be uh, relevant to women filmmakers as well, or to women characters, not necessarily made by women. Um, but yeah, the idea that if you have an audience that would keep their subscription to Netflix or whatever, I'm not saying that Netflix is the most progressive, I'm saying because it's such a big network and they have such a great output, then you can quantify how many uh, TV shows and films are addressed to a, an African American audience, for instance, or towards women who think of themselves as primarily, you know, workers uh, than wives or something like that. And I see it again in video essays in the sense that one of my objects of interest, not necessarily in Romania, because there's not such a large output here, but, uh, you know, the topic of my PhD and something that I've been attentive towards for years, 
Um, and I think video essays are more gender balanced than uh, documentaries and documentaries are more gender, gender balanced than art house films and art house films are more gender balanced than blockbusters and so on uh, because of this, you know, uh, counterbalance of money and power, like the more money you need for a project, then the less likely you are to get it as a woman. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for a video essay, all that you have to do is take some footage, make sure that nobody sues you for using it in public, uh, make it come together in a way, and then just release it to the World Wide Web and usually, you know, not expect any financial compensation. It is hard to be a video essayist, whether male or female, because there's, again, hardly any money in the job. Uh, but you can see filmmaking creativity in video essays as much as anything else mm -hmm. and I think in there they're more gender balanced uh what I did find amusing however especially since you know we all plead for women to have a voice and to be in committees and to vote for worldwide tops and so on but um one of the years where the sight and sound poll uh, was gathering the best video essays of the year uh the organizer mailed everyone saying something like, hey, the mails are in, uh, the, the votes are in mostly, but we're going to extend the deadline for four days or something like that. And we urge you, and we especially urge women to vote <laughs> because mm -hmm. um, so far it's overwhel overwhelmingly uh, male dominated. So we have like 50 male voters compared to, so 40 compared to 20 uh, female voters or non-binary. Um, so <laughs> I love it that the preoccupation is there. What they were doing in that particular case is basically putting pressure on women to work extra on a weekend to kind of cast their vote. I'm not saying it's not worth it, it probably was. Um, but yeah, you have this paradox where you have a niche of filmmaking that is uh, quite gender balanced. And then mm -hmm. a lot of people who get invited to vote for the poll are women uh, almost, you know, a balanced proportion. And then even then you have to overstate the importance of the yeah. vote of people who are not male <laughs> uh, to kind of not have a bias towards, you know, I'm not, again, it's not that male, pe male voters uh, pick blockbusters or like um, films where women are objectified and so on, but if you go to, uh, if you go through ballots one by one, mm -hmm. you usually see that there's some sort of uh, extra nuances in uh, female representation in, yeah, yeah in, in the winners of... Uh, I think it's kind of the, the, the thing of like, um, when you are in a, a privileged situation, you kind of, sometimes you might not be, um, also in terms of perspective, perspectives are, are different between individuals and amongst them their differences, but the fact is that um, there, there are differences in perspective, and so it's always good to have diversity to mm -hmm. just give us a broad perspective on things because things are too complex to be simplified in one single vision, correct? So uh, I think that uh, from all that I'm hearing, it's like, yeah, diversity is important because we need to hear more voices from women, from non-binary people, from everyone. That's the thing. And the thing is that the narrative has been male dominated. So it's good to have new voices, even if it has to do some extra work now. I think we're kind of, Unfortunately, we have to do it sometimes, but I think we're all kind of willing to do it. And that's uh, really important. And, and to finish this conversation, I think um, I would just like to ask you all, um, yeah, let's think about the positive things. Ada started with the successes of EWA. I think it's important to end with the positive note of like what has changed and how can we build an even stronger community and network so how can we make this even better, uh, not only in European uh, side of things, but in the in Romanian context? What can be done to improve things and just create this yeah, more diverse environment? I, I, I will go first and um, start from 
from something that Ada mentioned that she um, she feels like in the last years a lot has been done and it's much better and that there is much more confidence and I I, I just wanted to add that my um, the way I see things is very similar. I also notice it is um, you know a wave of confidence and um, I think that what can be done is you know continue doing uh, what we're doing, which is finding ways in which platforms exist. In our case, it's, it's, it's a festival outside of Romania. Uh, I cannot speak to the, 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 that much to things happening in Romania, but for us, I think that's the only thing. Continue doing, continue finding ways to put content forward, to bring it to audiences. Um, in our case, uh, it's to audience, to, to, to people who are not necessarily Romanians here, but they are just lovers of, of Romanian cinema. Clearly, Romanian cinema has a, a a platform here, but also to the Romanian community in our case. Um, so I think that's the most important. Just continue doing the work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, it's continuing what 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 we managed to to do. Um, and highlighting uh, highlighting the um, uh, the results uh, of of women, but the other key word uh, that I find it not only for for this matter but in general for for the positioning of the Romanian cinema uh, towards um, towards the authorities is the the key word I think it's solidarity. Mm -hmm. And building by 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 sticking together, and you know, the, for, for me in the last year, I think that this um, this was the the um, as I said the key word, and uh, and it means a lot. Uh, maybe it doesn't look like so, and it sounds a little bit. Uh, uh, pathetic or uh, wooden language, but it's not. It, it's really that you feel, and prob probably because I'm a woman and I have this kind of um, tendency of, of being a mother and being, you know, the, keeping the family together, probably I have this uh, more into my, into my genes. Um, but I think that the, the, the way the women are approaching this kind of uh, community um, values, the um, more temperate and more, uh, you know, uh, the, the lack of um, arrogance that you find in the, in, the, in the feminine communities or among the female artists, um, uh, it's it's another it's another thing that we should uh, value and treasure and um, and put at work at work in terms to achieve this kind of solidarity and uh, and keeping um, keeping each other in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to shout out a bit pessimistic and and on a hopefully more optimistic note. Um, I, I think really it's limited what we can do as individuals, especially in the face of society at large. I mean, we've all heard the news in the last year that during lockdown, more women than men have had to quit their jobs to take care of the kids because they were not going to school and so on. And it made more sense even economically that um, if their salaries were lower, then you know that's the easier job to sacrifice and so on. Yeah. So I think the path toward the actual gender equality is very long and we have to prepare for it with a lot of patience. Um, but I think progress, are, progress is being done slowly and maybe not necessarily in a linear way, uh, but definitely, you know, solidarity helps. And in terms of film criticism, I really think we have to acknowledge that there is no one vantage point that is, you know, above everything else. No matter how many films you've seen and how, uh, you know, cultivated or like schooled and aesthetic you consider yourself to be, and yeah, we have to. That says, you know, a film made by a French male director is uh, more important or like better cinema than someone. Or than something made by an Iranian woman or something like that. Um, I do think we have to keep our minds open and especially to support 
emerging voices because you never mm -hmm. know what they have to say until they've had you know time to articulate it it might not come out perfectly eloquently uh the yeah. first time and yeah i think it takes a lot of patience and open-mindedness to make things at least slightly better <laughs> <laughs> okay so thank you all uh for joining us for this uh talk and i think we're i think we're done uh thank you so much really uh it was really good to get your insight on this Thank you, Thank you very Thank much you for, for your invitation. invitation. Of course, of course. Thank you. Stop for the festival. <laughs> <laughs>